my channel. Today I'm going to go through all my October makes or all the things that I remember I made in October. Um, sometimes the list gets really long and it just kind of goes over my head a little bit um, but I will try to include everything that I did. Um, the first thing is this little sweater that I made, or sweater dress sorry. Um, this is a linden sweater, um, or started off life as a linden sweater, which I then lengthened to make it dress length. It's something that I've done several times in the past, and it's always worked out really well. Um, I've made myself a couple, I've made um, some for my sisters as well, and it's just that classic sweater dress shape. It's perfect for, you know, trying to stay cosy in the winter, great with tights and boots, etc. Um, the special thing about this one is the fabric that I've used. So I was sent this fabric from um, Chat Chocolat, which is a French fabric company. Um, she creates her own prints and fabrics and for sale. You can get them, I think, from Guthrie Garni, other places. I will double check and link a couple below if I can do, or if not, straight to um, the Chat Chocolat website. Um, but this one, which I loved, is this burgundy print with these um, silhouettes of um, giant stand of poodles. Um, I'm not usually much of a poodle fan, but this just really appealed to me. And um, I also got the matching rib with this as well. So it's got, um, I've got the rib cuffs and on the hem band as well. Um, I hacked the pattern very slightly. So I had this little ruffle into the arms, the arm into the arm, to add this little ruffle into the arm seam here. And on both sides just in the front not on the back and I use the ribbing to do that because the ribbing's a little bit thinner and a little bit lighter than the sweater fabric um I just uh, add a little bit more pizzazz to this dress um but yeah it's just really cute really comfy you know something that you would want to wear um during the cold wintry days basically um but it's just worked out really well just so I just want to say thank you to Shasha Love for sending me the fabric. Um, it's really lovely stuff. Um, so on to my next make. Hold tight. So I've got a couple of jumpers to show you. The first of which is this um, McCall's sweater, um, which I made for the Love Sewing Magazine reader review. I actually made this a couple of months ago, but I only just got around to posting and talking about it because of when the magazine came out. Um, so the fabric's from Minerva Crafts, it's this um, houndstooth ponty roma and a, a mustard ponty roma knit as well. I did the view which has the little shoulder patches over the top. So this is actually, it's not a separate pattern piece, well it is, but it's not um, treated as such. It's overlaid onto um, the top of the shoulder, so there's actually a seam underneath here. And then the pattern piece goes over the top, the, sorry, the shoulder piece goes over the top and then top stitch down is placed and then it's just treated as one. Um, I always find this shoulder seem a bit baffling because if you compare that to say the linden sweater which I was wearing just before that, it's pretty much the same but it doesn't need to have that shoulder seam in there. I don't know if that's just because it's a little bit of a looser fit and a wider neck that they've left it like that. Um, but I wonder if you could get away with eliminating that, that seam there. Um, so I went with this colour choice just to have something that's a little bit more fun, a little bit more interesting, and that pop of colour with the mustard everywhere as well. Um, I love everything in mustard at the moment. Um, had a really great opportunity to go up to Stockport to where Love Sewing headquarters are and had a little photo shoot there with um, Amy, the editor of Love Sewing, and had a little photography session with Renata, their in-house photographer there as well, to take photos for the magazine. Um, so also quite nice to you know, just get dressed up, get all quaffed up and things like that. Um, not something that happens every day. <laughs> I don't normally put that much effort into my day-to-day -day hair and makeup, but it's nice to get all dolled up every now and then. All right, so my next sweater to show you is the Tavel V-neck from So House 7. I'm just gonna go pop that on. So this is the Tavel V-neck from So House 7. So House 7. So this is the Tavel V-neck from So House 7. Um, I made mine in this, what feels like an acrylic knit. 
never gonna know what fibre this is. Um, for our, this was from Warcrest Textiles in East London. It's just a big warehouse store. Um, it's amazing. It's the first time I went there. It was amazing. It's a massive like maze of stuff, and literally you felt like you're gonna like you know get caught under an avalanche of fabric because it's like being piled mountain mountains high. But um, it's a great chance to just you know dive in and explore and see what you can find because there's some real gems to be found. I mean, this fabric is like really super soft and um, I love this grid pattern over the top. Um, it's my first time making a v-neck sweater so if I show you a little bit more details with that. And um, this uses like a really wide neckband for the v-neck sweater and um, that overlaps at the front so that was a technique that was new to me. I've never done anything like that before. Um, I'm actually surprised at how neat I managed to get it. I do think the instructions with the Say How 7 patterns are actually very good. So even if they, this looks and sounds kind of pretty tricky, um, I mean, I got it fine on the first go, you know, it was not, a, not as tricky as you think it's going to be. And um, I just really like it. It's a great casual sweater. Um, and I never make this style, this neckline. Usually all my sweaters are round necks or polo necks. Usually all my sweaters are round necks or turtle necks, um, which I think are probably a little easier to make, but this I thought was really exciting just for the new challenge. The hem on here is again a step is, is a, a stepped hem similar to what they do with the toaster sweater. Um and they use similar techniques, so I really love these. These are like the mitered corners that they do with theirs. Um, and it's just, you know, it's just crazy satisfying turning those out and seeing these beautiful corners just appear um, out of thin air. Um, I've done some reasonable pattern matching on this, not great, but um, I'm quite pleased with how that's all turned out. Um, yeah, I don't know, if, like, I'm, I don't know if this is just too casual. It might be relegated to pyjamas at some point in the future because it feels so soft and snuggly that it feels a bit pyjama <laughs> Um But yeah, I'm really happy with how that one turned out. This pattern is something that comes in lots of different variations as well. So it's got um, v-neck t-shirts, um, I think it's got a longer length and kind of almost tunic version of it as well. And something that I think can be mixed and matched with the different neck bands and and just put the different neck bands and sleeve lengths as well so it's again it's a really versatile pattern there too all right on to the next one so this is the pumpkin cardigan from um coco wawa and um, i pattern tested this one for anna um a little while ago um this i made out of this really stretchy knit that i got from walton's day it's like crazy stretchy um which is probably I think was a stretchier than the recommended for the pattern. Um, okay, so the pumpkin cardigan, it's an unusual pattern in terms of style. Like, I don't think I've seen anything like this anywhere else. Um, you can make it as a cardigan or you can make it as a dress and either sleeveless or with sleeves, depending on what you fancy. Um, it's really fitted up on the bust, up on this area and across the upper chest. And then flares out into a very A-line shape over the hips there. Um, Anna provides options for things like rock pockets or patch pockets um, and a square or v-neck um, neckline as well. Um, the neck hems and everything are all finished with bands so you can see I've got this, I kept the kind of an alternating stripe so a vertical stripe going down the front um, and again you've got the, uh, the hem band across the bottom as well. I chose not to put buttons on mine, um, she don't recommend either buttons or poppers for them and that's just because with the stretch of the fabric I think that any buttons would just completely stretch it out and shave any buttonholes so I decided not to bother and just have this more like a jacket style um, cardigan instead. But I'll show you, Hans, I'll take it off and you can have a better look. So this is one of these jerseys. I didn't actually finish the jerseys, the seams on the inside here. And you can see just how neat they still look though. Um, and with jersey this thick, they won't even roll because of how um, how they are. Um, so these, these seams will stay like this forever. Um, so yeah, that's what it looks like from the front and from the back. Um, uh, 
probably not my style, I'd say, in terms of pattern. Um, I'm not great with cardigans anyway, but I wanted to try it out and just offer my feedback to Anna. Um, the pattern itself is pretty good, but it works well. Um, the instructions are good, so if you know that you're looking for something of that style, then absolutely go for it. So this next one I've got to show you is this dress right here. It's the By Hand London Eloise dress, or hack of the By Hand London Eloise dress, which I made to wear to this um, thing in London. It was called Divine Proportions. It's this weird gods and goddess themed immersive dinner at theatre bonanza thing. Anyway, I wanted to make something that was really kind of over the top. And I also really wanted to try my hand at pattern clashing because it's something I've always wanted to do and I always miss out on the opportunity to do it. You know, I don't buy the right fabrics, etc. I don't have the right patterns um, to try it on. And I wanted to kind of grab the opportunity when it came. So I've used two types of polyester peach skins for this project both of which I got from So Me Sunshine. Um, so they're both got the same burgundy base, or there's a very, very slight difference, I think, in terms of the color between the two. And it's got some of the similar kind of blues of flowers between the two. So whilst they're quite different prints in this style, in their style and in size, there's a lot going on that's the same with them. And that was really important to me. It needed to kind of just have a little bit of a theme rather than just be com two completely different fabrics. Um, I chose to use the bigger print for the bodice of the Eloise, so I kept the top half exactly as the pattern suggests, um, down to if you were making the midi length um, dress there, so it comes down to um, just to the kind of low hip here. Um, I've kept the sleeves short and added the, the contrast ruffle on each side. Um, and that's the same thing that I did with my original Eloise in terms of keeping the sleeves this, this length because I'm not good with big ruffle right at my wrist. So, but at the el elbow, I like ruffles everywhere. But further down, I think I'm just too messy and clumsy to get away with something so big right around. I don't know, something that I need, you know, I'm just gonna, I know I'm just gonna get them really dirty. I'm gonna get them, like knock stuff over with them, but at the elbow I tend to get away with it a bit more. Now my roll hat came with the skirt. The Eloise takes up a lot of fabric, um, like a lot, a lot of fabric. You don't have to make the ruffle as big and as wide and as full as they suggest, um, but it does add to that kind of dramatic flair, if that's what you're looking for. Um, I didn't have enough fabric to do what I wanted to do. Initially when I bought it, I had planned to make the shorter dress, um, but last minute decided that I want to go full length with it, which meant that I didn't have enough to do as big of a ruffle as I wanted. Um, so what I've ended up doing is creating two panels of the, the um, smaller print and ruffle those across going that way. So, and this is um, the full width of the fabric and then this is twice the width of the fabric so you're creating more volume as the skirt goes down and then with the offcuts of the other print I've added on another ruffle that goes over the top and it's sandwiched in between the two layers and that's just to kind of break it up and introduce a little bit more interest going down the dress and um, just break up that smaller pattern because um, it was getting a bit much having that much of it all at once so um, I think that by breaking it up a little bit more and um, it really worked and just made it a little bit more cohesive it's still a completely wacky dress I'll be honest um, I like wearing it with the flower headband that I bought which is a bit in a burgundy color um, which just kind of completes the look it's all a bit out there and over the top but sometimes you know it really works and especially if you tame it down wear it with some boots or trainers denim jacket over the top actually you can get away with wearing this and no one looks twice at you and um, so even if you think this is a bit over the top I would still totally just wear this down to the shops <laughs> which I think is the best thing to do for these things um, especially when you've spent all that time and effort and making these lovely dresses I think any excuse to wear them really so my last dress to show you is this one it's the pelvic coat dress from Named 
um, which I made for my Minerva Crafts make this month. Um, I've used this kind of army green Ponty knits for it. Um, I love sewing with Ponty. It's a really uh, structured knit fabric, so it's really easy to sew up. It doesn't stretch out too much as it's going through the machine. Great for beginner sewers if you are looking for, if you're looking for a kind of an entry fabric in, in sewing jerseys and knits as well. So I'm gonna stand up and give you a little twirl. Hopefully you can see a little bit more. So. The dress kind of, it looks like a trench, really fitted trench coat, essentially. It wraps over the front, double breasted all the way down. It's got a little button on the inside of this side here, just to keep that, that left hand side closed as well. Full length sleeves, really nice deep pockets on the front here as well. It gives you like kind of great body shape around, all the way around as well. Um, and it's a nice kind of like knee, just below the knee, midi length too. Um, it's one of those patterns that I think gets bypassed a lot, um, but I think it's just so flattering and so easy to sew. I think I made it in a couple of hours, like in, despite the, what looked like quite a complicated kind of collar and all of that. Um, I think those princess seams just make things really, really quick to put together. And because of the knit, um, it's made out of a stretchy fabric, the fitting is really easy as well. So I took this up um, a little bit at the waist um, because named patterns are designed for someone literally, I think, six inches taller than me. I always take out a little bit from the middle because that's where I'm, I tend to be the shortest at the, in the, at the waist of the torso. So I took out an inch, I think, in the middle here, and that just actually um, was enough. Um, I could potentially have gotten away with taking out a little bit more. I don't think it was kind of 100% necessary. As I said, the lines of the dress um, stretch, basically, because it's knit, so um, it doesn't need to be kind of spot on, 100% perfect for it to still look really, really good. Um, these buttons are ones I've had in my stash for a while. I don't remember where they're from. I think I've had them for years. Um, I still think I've still got enough to make something else with them as well. I don't know where I got them from, but I really like them. Um, when, and yeah, just in general, I like, it's a great dress. It's real, it looks really quite formal. Like it's great for like an office or, you know, date night, evening out, like a nice dinner or something like that. Um, I wore it to the named clothing book launch party, which we had a few weeks ago, um, and I think it worked really well. I do think it looks better on the hills, I'll be honest. I did wear it out with flats once, and I don't think it looked as good. I, think, I don't think my butt looked as good. Hills sometimes really works wonders. Um, but it is a lovely dress. So, that's all I've got to show you today. Um, Stick around and I'm sure you'll be seeing lots more of my makes next month too. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest videos and I will see you then. Bye guys!